Let's do a quick t-test here to compare the average values between the people with and without a family history of hypertension so you can see how to build a t-test into your spreadsheet. Um, so once again, the red variables, uh, the red um, subject IDs are our um, positive family history of hypertension folks. The black ones are our negative family, uh, family history of hypertension folks. And we're going to use the peak diameter column um, from the flow media dilation test in order to um, compare these two um, right now and we'll show you how to uh, do this across the variables though. So let's go down here to where it says between variable stats and I, I actually think that this should probably say just between stats. Um, so let's get rid of that variable and let's make this a t-test t-test um, family history of hypertension, just so we know what it is. So it's a t-test comparing across family history of hypertension status. So go ahead and add status in there too. All right, so I am now, I uh, have my, uh, myself highlighted in the uh, cell E40. Um, so in line with the data that I want to compare and in line with the, um, the, the label here for the t-test. So we'll click there hit equals, start typing T, and it's T dot test um, in the current version of Excel. So T dot test is what you're looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click this now that it's already uh, showing it. And it's asking for a number of things. So let's click up here in our formula bar so that we can see what it wants. All right, so first it wants the first array. What that means is the data for one of our Groups. So I already said that the red is the people with the family history of hypertension. So let's highlight um, all of their data for this variable. So that is right here through right here. Um, and we have to separate these different parts of the t-test with a comma. So I'm going to click up here again, put a comma, and it's now asking for array 2. That is our other group's data. So our other group is down here. So I will highlight again down here and click back up here put another comma and it's asking me do I want to do a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test you almost always do a two-tailed test if you're doing a one-tailed test you should know why you're doing it so um, and you should know more about the statistics you're running anyways but if you don't know if you should have a one-tailed test you probably should not have a one-tailed test so it's almost always going to be the second one the second option or you can just type two or you can um, double click that but I'm going to type two and hit a comma and now it's asking me for the type of t-test um, a paired t-test or we have these two different um, versions of a two sample um, t-test, one with um, equal variance, one with unequal variance. Um, a paired t-test would be if it's the same people in both conditions. So if you're comparing conditions within a, a group rather than between two groups like we're doing, that'd be a paired test. So the same people before and after exercise for a variable, that would be a paired t-test. We're not doing that here. We're comparing two different groups of people. So they are different people in each condition. Um, generally speaking, um, for a quick look at your statistics, it's probably fine to go with the equal variance, so the option two here. So I can either double click this again um, or go up here and hit just type two, and now I'm at the end, so I'm going to hit the end parenthesis and hit enter. All right, and so the p value, so that's what it's giving you, it's the p value for the t test. Um, comparing the peak diameter between our two groups, or people with and without a family history of hypertension, it is not statistically significant because the p value is above 0 0.05, it is 0 0.481. Um, and let's go ahead and copy that across. So I just highlighted um, the cell, went to that little box in the bottom right hand corner until I had the plus symbol for my cursor, clicked it and dragged it across. And that will quickly calculate your t-test across your groups for every variable within your spreadsheet. So it's a really quick way of doing it. Not a perfect way of doing it. Again, you need to kind of know your data a little bit. You probably should do some tests to see if it's normally distributed at the very least. Um, but you can quickly look at your data and get some idea of what the statistics are here in Excel uh, doing it this way. So simply doing this t-test like this just gives you a p-value and that's it. So it's either statistically significant or it's not. Um, but 
Oftentimes people um, will interpret a little beyond the, the p-value, especially with small sample size studies like this one. Um, and the best way of doing that is probably not to um, talk about trends within the p-value, which oftentimes people do, and I've done it in the past as well. Your better bet is to look at an effect size. The most common effect size used with a t-test is a Cohen's D, so I'll show you how to do that in the next video.